Greetings and welcome to In-Depth MDK Rostar. It is always a pleasure speaking to Chairman of the Tunapuna Piaco Regional Corporation, Kwesi Robinson. We are going to do some more of that, speaking specifically to things within his remit, as well as to the larger national landscape. Chairman, welcome. How are you doing? Hey, hello. Hello, DK. Hello to all the listeners and viewers on TTT, on the on the air, free to air, and also online. Um, it's a pleasure to be here, DK. I'm really glad to have you. And I want to ask you more responsibilities or more stress in terms of like some of those pros and cons of regional corporations having the impended um, more responsibility and implementation power. I don't know if you would have spoken to my minister on this, but he is really big on faster delivery for of goods and services to the purchases. There's still that is 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 your work. No, is my work in terms of whether or not the is the regional corporation supposed to be doing this or is line line ministry supposed to be dealing with it. So is that one of the things? And how important is it for individuals who are around an area to know who they should uh, go to to address their concerns? Outside the Tunapuna Corporation, we try very little to um, pass the buck in terms of it, even if something doesn't fall directly in your locus of control or influence. We as representatives have a responsibility to try to, if we kind of directly help the purchase, we should um, we should be at this passing the bulges on to the person who can help them. And not just a cold handover, a warm handover, saying that this is what should be happening and, and, and A and B. Um, in terms of, will that clear up a lot of the confusion, of course. However, I can say that even in instances where the roads are not ours or the roads are the ministry of roads, or the roads are ours, we have tremendous support from Minister Rowan Sinanon. So you would have seen some videos recently where he would have done um, significant work in Santa Rosa. That is the area that, that I have responsibility for. However, as a government, I believe overall, um, whether something is the, the role of the Ministry of Public Utilities or the Ministry of... Um, local government. Once we work together, it's about delivery. The government is about serving people, and that is what is the important thing. There is an increased time period or timeline for that service to take place. How does that help? Because I've heard uh, arguments on both sides of the fence in terms of saying, okay, well, we have more time as local government bodies to implement things that we would have uh, said that we were going to and some persons have said, okay, well, it's just a longer time frame for you to start the election cycle again. How does that longer time frame treat with you from where you sit? Well, I don't know of many good things that could be accomplished in a very short space of time. Um, significant changes require a significant amount of time. Now, I'm not saying that anybody should be a monarch and queen until I pass away or king until I pass away. But with that being said, the changes that are required in in this country and a lot in the world require some systematic rethink of how we do things. Um, the Minister of Local Government is extremely well at, he has a phrase called um, building the plane while we fly. But once the engine goes, he's ready to go with the plane, we'll get the seats and stuff then after. So he's very good at doing things quickly, but there are some things that just take time. And with moving from three to four years, I appreciate it for whoever is the incoming council because of course, we don't know if I'm going to be here. Most of the people who they are maybe arguing with pros and cons, not sure if they're going to be there. So I'm saying that whoever it is takes over the reins of local government, I believe that more time in, in just more additional 12 months um, is important. Um, additionally, sometimes when you rush to do things, sometimes you miss some key information. And I have thought fallen victim of that as a young man in politics of course i want to do everything now i want to look good everything want to go good and and sometimes you realize that you also just have to take your time now there are some things that, that just take too long again the minister of local government is addressing that and also the minister of um, digitization honorable um senator Bacchus, Minister Bacchus. so once we come together and have those things working i think that the country will be where it needs to be because we need to know that when 
somebody has an expectation that we would repair the road, that we have the system to do so, uh, the people to do so, uh, the plant and the machinery. So the system has to work now. And this opportunity for local government reform is an attempt to fix the system that we function in. And you just spoke about Santa Rosa. What are some of the other areas or where are some of the other things happening? Because I think sometimes you still forget uh, the size, the sheer size of the Tunapuna Piaco Regional Corporation. So what are some of the good things that are happening that you can share with us? So right now we have um, refurbishment books that, that are about to start in the market. Um, we have our DP. This is the most money we have gotten in about the past six years. We have close to $30 million for our DP projects. Each electoral district was given our first even share, and we have work that's going to take this throughout the region. And um, we also have in the region with tomorrow returning sod for the um the national the Lohokata Library. Um for the year within the region, we'd have opened about um, four refurbished schools, in, including the Maracas Valley SDA Early Child Center. So as a government, we have done significant things within the region of Tuna Tuna Piaco. We completed a community center. Um, our neighboring um, corporation, which is the Arima Borough Corporation, I work very well with the mayor and also the MP, the Honorable Camille um, Penelope Beckles. They move into the smart city and then talks with the minister. She's the minister of um, planning. We also look into bring Tuna Puna into that smart city system. Um, the Honorable Camille Robinson Regis would have opened the swimming pool in Maloney. We have tremendous infrastructure we're going there. We're refurbishing the Maloney basketball court. In the south part of the um, region, we have work going on in the Frederick Settlement area. There's a horrible um, flood situation there. So once we have our DPs approved this year, a horrible water and drainage system happening there. We want to fix that. We also have the in Oropun, we do some roadworks in Oropun. I know Oropun residents have been clamoring. The boulevard is horrible. And with Oropun also, there has been a petition to rename the Oropun Boulevard, the Roy Cape Boulevard. And we have the signs and everything ready, but I would have spoken to the stakeholders involved and I would have refused to erect the sign unless we repaired Oropun Boulevard. So we actually worked in on that. And so we, there's always work going on. You know, there's always work going on and there's always more work to be done. Today we do an... Um, we're doing water trucking in Maloney. I know you're gonna follow the news with, with the horrible leak it has in the Davani area close to Karapo there. And as such, communities like Maloney were without water, Karapo, so we're trucking water there. So the corporation is there to serve, um, but there's always more to be done. And there are a few things that you spoke of, and I want to kind of bring some themes together. One, the fact that while some things may take time, some things take too long. Two, the fact that it is not just the regional corporation's job to do something, but at the same time, there's a. it seems as though there's a uh, all-hands-on-deck approach. Yeah, and how important down. is it to break down those silos so that you have stakeholders involved in a manner that things get done a lot more smoothly as opposed to just say okay well we did this we put up the sign saying okay well yes Roy K Boulevard but at the same time the roads still need to fix so in terms of like having those synergies taking place where is that on the on the table yeah well I mean that is the most important thing this weekend we would have been in Tobago for a target retreat for the Minister of Local Government and the Minister of Planning and the 14 chairmen it didn't matter if you were a PNM chairman or UNC chairman all 14 chairmen sit we also have people coming to do with climate change. And I'll give an example. A lot of the times you hear people get criticized whilst they digging on the holes after it paved, the hole in the road after it paved. That is something through coordination we can fix. But secondly, with that, in terms of patching skill set of all the state agencies, in my opinion, I've been involved in this type of work for 10 years. The WASA training and staff in terms of the patching teams in the, in the East West Corridor are one of the best. So within the past 12 months, liaison with the Minister of Public Utilities, whenever we have material, we share the knowledge, they help train some of the corporation workers and they assist us with patching. Sometimes the schools they might have left, but now there's no longer, it's a WASA whole or a corporation or a ministry or school. There's a whole there and it's our responsibility as a government, as a regional corporation to fix it. And as I said, just a simple thing as WASA transferring that knowledge because in spite of all the criticism they get for leaving the host, in terms of their knowledge 
manufacturing and they are very good. I'm telling you, of all the agencies, they are one of the best in terms of um, resurfacing and repairing portals. It's just for them to have the material. Sometimes we have the material. Sometimes the ministry has the material we transport it. So that synergy, I think, as a government, it is working well. There's much for us to improve, but I am happy with working with all my ministers and just in our regional corporation, I have either residing or as a member of parliament, the Minister of Health, the Minister of Housing, the Minister of Works, Minister of Youth, Minister of Ministry of Education, Minister of Planning. Um, so within my cooperation, it was important for us to get to this point where synergy is happening in a railway. And I'm pleased to say that though we have far to go, it's much improved, much improved. I feel like you're showing off a little bit, you know. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> but, no, but I'm, but I'm, but I'm, but I'm, but I'm, and I'm happy as well. I really appreciate it. I'm also grateful that, uh, because sometimes you hear certain things when they're negative. So like, uh, these individuals did not come to the meeting. These individuals said the, the, the boycott in it. But at the same time, you just said that everyone was there uh, for, for this one. And hopefully yeah. we're able to to reap the benefits of it as as a nation. But uh, we take a short break. We come back and continue this conversation. We're speaking with Chairman of the Tunapuna Piaco Regional Corporation, Mr. Kwesi Robinson. Stay with us. We return with more. Welcome. We're speaking with Mr. Kwesi Robinson, Chairman of the Tunapuna Piaco Regional Corporation. And we've been speaking about synergies, and I want to ask about partnerships as well, please, Mr. Robinson, because uh, I think I've, one of the things that I saw was relief being given through a partnership of international project initiatives and the regional corporation. Uh, tell me a little bit about that, please, as well as some of the things that you look forward to in terms of saying, okay, well, let us do this together. So in terms of the partnerships, I must highlight... Um... Councillor Austin and the Vice Chairman of the Corporation, Councillor Travis Williams, because in terms of partnerships, they have carried significant load in terms of one, finding suitable partners for the corporation and then shortening the lag time in terms of implementation of some of these things. So we have target solutions supporting us. We have um, the file on file group of companies. We have um, a lot of the religious bodies too, through the Vice Chairman of the Corporation. It's a staunch um, Roman Catholic. He works with a lot of those NGOs with that around the Roman Catholic Church in the country. And we were able to do significant work during COVID and even now. Additionally, in terms of our NGOs and partnerships like that, just having good stakeholder relations with um, businesses that supply us or suppliers to get a long line of credit. And for example, Sunday, Saturday night for Panama, we may have had 20 requests to transport fans. We may have only been up, we would have only been able to do two on our own, but through the intervention of partners, we were able to do up to the six bands and two that we were able to support. We did not do everybody, it is difficult. However, with all the help of all stakeholders, it's almost impossible to do any because just the overtime for one of those nights alone might run us a significant, significant amount of money. However, you're, you're able to call a stakeholder to give support, even with the water issue today. And I said, there are, there are people who deliver in water for free. Companies who deliver in water to free to some areas. Of course, where we can give people business, we do. But those partnerships are invaluable. Last week, I would have, from an old contact, I'd have, I'd have gotten a, a connection with an agency that come in to do some training for disasters, an international agency. Um, the name escapes me now, but again, that is just through relationships with persons. Um, through my partnership and, and relationship with you at TTT, I'm able to get my message out. That's a significant thing that I believe that it's really good. I enjoy that relationship with many media houses. And um, it's just important that we continue to grow those partnerships. And that even talks to me about the the, the warm handover that you would have mentioned earlier, as opposed to say, well, send the fool further and you keep on having people following this paper trail. And sometimes, and, and people remember that as opposed to just the service that was done, but how the service was done. And that is, can sometimes be a challenge. But in terms of challenges though, yes, partnerships are taking place and the things are happening. Uh, how do you measure, monitor, 
get some information on some of these things that are taking place so that you can give feedback or you or you can streamline the process or possibly sometimes just being able to answer a question of what have you done uh, but at yeah. the same time try to balance that with maintaining a bit of dignity for individuals and stuff that are being helped and, and that is a thin line because i try to not post pictures when i give out aid the persons however if you don't do it you're accused of not doing anything so I always have to walk a thin line between informing the public and becoming uh, like if a campaign. It's a very thin line. I don't think that I've, I've perfected it because when I don't post, people say nothing is happening. And when I do, they say a campaign. In. So it's a thin line. Um, I don't think that I can take every critic um, as serious as they would like me to take them. However, it is just important for us to continue to share the information because, okay, so right now, the Ministry of Public Utilities contacted me today to submit a list of parks for solar lighting. So, I mean, when I didn't stolen, I could take pictures and but then it might also come out like self-promotion. But I'm saying we're collecting data now, we're going to speak to them. We're also working on a system also to calculate the total value to repair all the roads in the region, which is not a simple task. It started during Minister Alwari's national cleanup exercise, where we did a survey part of it. And from that, I got the data from ABC with all the streets. We have a thousand more streets than any um, corporation in, in the country. So we, our road officers going out there calculating, okay, this is what we're going to take to fix all these roads. Again, when we finish this foundation that we set in here, Whoever is to come, it will, I think it will be much better for them. And also, as citizens, it is more transparent. So you know that your council have got $4 million this year, or $400,000 this year. And these are the roads that they selected. These are the roads that they're selecting for next year. And once we have that kind of transparency, I think it's also better for persons to feel like we're hearing them. Because one, one of the things I have to always repeat myself and tell Burgess is that I hear you. So I know that they are... 10 landslips in the Tunapuna area. I know that we haven't fixed the landslip in East Gate in the back of St. John Road. I know what the landslips in Fire was. I know they are drains to clear in the, the that, that um, Frederick Settlement area. We know about the Blanche shares. So we know in Curap we have the garages there. We know the bar complaining. So once we have the information and we have to communicate with the society, they feel a lot better. And they know that, okay, this is not a situation where we are numb to what is happening. We understand what's happening and we, we, we set enough foundation to go forward. Are some of those calculations, do they take place within a range? Because I can imagine uh, if calculations were done during a cleanup campaign, this is before some of the areas you, you mentioned, Frederick Settlement yeah, so and there was flooding. Do those roads look the same after that? So how, how, no, how so relevant is the data? It's, it's an ongoing thing. So the system that we're trying to set up is every day we have 1,600 workers on the field or should have. Because I accept the fact that everybody may not be engaged in terms of how efficient they should be as, as they ought to be. So we should have 1,600 workers on the field, 1,300 workers on the field. When you go there, and, and this is an important point for us to get, when you go on the field as a road officer and you see a garbage dump, you report that. Or you at least note it. So that when we go, okay, we have this report that there's a dump um, happening on farm road in St. Joseph. Real, real, real thing here now. And then when the road officer goes out to check the workers, he will see, okay, there are holes on um, in Cayman and St. Joseph. And then we will just cross reference it. Okay, how, how long it is because our workers ought to have the tools necessary to take those quick measurements, take up it, everybody have camera phone. And then once we continue to build that database, it makes sense. And the, the system that we build in now, it will have ratings for the road. Does it require the entire resheeting? Does it require milling? And all workers have those expertise. But once we have that type of system, if we could input the data, it makes decision making much easier. And with better decision making and better transparency, you find that you have a, a better relationship with stakeholders. Because I would have last year listed the, all the projects that we did you know, and put it out. 
send the council as they would come and so tell people these are all heroes we do. So this year, last year we received $4.5 million. This year we received $10 million. So I asked the councillors, first operate like we only got $4.5 million and tell me those roads that you would have done. And then the money that was remained, I asked them to do particular roads. So for example, in the electoral district of St. Augustine, South Piaco, St. Helena, I asked for some attention to be paid to the Oropoon area. So after you get your first $5 million, we split up that. The next $5 million, let us look at things that I believe is important to the region. The Federal Settlement Area. I found this on the web. Sorry, that's not Siri. The Federal Settlement Area. To me, those persons should not be living like that. After you as council, I'll take your three, four hundred thousand dollars in a project you want to do. I am giving the additional money, but I'm asking that to be focused on these projects. And I think that level of transparency will augur well for people to feel because a lot of persons in the country feel that nobody hears them. I think that's we just need to communicate that we are hearing them. Because I think when I hear people complain to the other meeting in La Hokuta, and there was a situation last week where AGC broke down some illegal structures. And in the meeting, people felt that we weren't hearing them and that's not, the, that's not what actually happened. So it's just to improve the communication. And we want to thank you for this level of communication that we've just shared with you, Chairman Kwesi Robinson, Chairman of the Tunapuna Piaco Regional Corporation. And on behalf of the entire TTT News team, I'm DK Ronster. This has been In Depth With Me. Thank you so much for joining us.